Hi there, this is Dave, and I'm here to talk about how the Hemi became the LA small block V8 engine. And it was kind of interesting because most people don't realize that the engine underneath the hood of a Viper or a Dodge Ram from the 1990s, or even a late, say, Dodge Diplomat, originated in the same Hemi that was known for the 392 racing cars. So let's dive into it right now. The engineers at Chrysler had been investigating numerous types of combustion chambers for a brand new V8, which would be Chrysler's very first V8 engine. They didn't call it the Hemi yet. It had hemispherical heads, but they called it the dual rocker, and that's actually what it would stay called until the days of the 426 Hemi, which was, in many ways, completely unrelated. So they started out with 331 cubic inches and it was a very powerful engine for the time and a pattern emerged where every time that they came out with a new Hemi the next year GM had an engine that beat it just on cubic inches. Keeping in mind for any given displacement it was really the ideal engine because the hemispherical head meant that you could have bigger valves, it meant that you had more resistance to detonation, it just provided more power and more efficiency, but you could beat it by getting a big cheap wedge head engine and just making it bigger. And it didn't take long for Chrysler to bump up against the maximum size of their engine, which was 392 cubic inches. And the problem with the Hemi heads was that they were very expensive, they were slow to make, and they made the engine quite large on top and fairly heavy. To make more V8s, as it became clear that a V8 would not just be for Imperials and top Chryslers, but that they would be needed by Dodge and DeSoto, and then even by Plymouth, they switched to polyspherical heads, which meant that they could cut out some of the valve gear and they could make the engines more rapidly and more cheaply and without needing so much space in the engine bay. The poly head engines were step one and they're still called poly V8s because of their polyspherical heads. And then you had the A engines and these were basically the poly engines with many changes made by the engineers so that they could be built at new automated factories. And then came the LA and that had even more changes. It had a lightweight casting mostly, and they switched to wedge heads. As one engineer later said, they finally got rid of that silly polysphere because they tested the head designs again, and they found that it didn't make a difference. You didn't get extra power from the poly head as they thought that they would. The wedge head allowed them to have more area for squish. It was the better design. And it was cheaper and they could make more engines faster, which was great because Plymouth now needed a boatload of V8s and Plymouth was the volume brand. No other brand at Chrysler was really mass, mass production. So over the years, the LA engines were updated many times and they were improved many times and they were uh, tuned for maximum performance with the famous 340 V8 and then they were tuned for maximum conformity to emissions controls and they ended up with just two sizes, the 318 and 360 or 5.2 and 5.9 as they would eventually be known. Eventually, they optimized those using computer models, and then they optimized them again with fuel injection, and then they optimized them again with a sophisticated sequential multiple port fuel injection system, powering Dodge Ram pickups and such. And of course, we all know about when they took two cylinders off and made the 3.9 V6 and put those two cylinders back on again to make the Viper V10. I am, of course, simplifying, and it was more than that, but that's essentially where the Viper V10 came from. It was the LA engine with two more cylinders added on. And that takes you well to the 21st century, which is quite good for an engine which was, at its heart, the original 1951 Chrysler V8, updated and modified and updated and modified again. So you can see more, much more detail about every one of these engine families and all the steps that they had to take with all the technical details at motels.com.